So today I'm going to show you how to import hosts from AWS um, just using the AWS API. Um, this is where the power of mass really sort of comes in when you can import uh, hosts in an automated way like this. Uh, suddenly it means you can keep everything up to date as things are rapidly changing. Uh, at my last job we had it importing, uh, depending on which system you're looking at, either every 5 minutes or every 10 minutes, uh, which meant that we always had the most up to date uh, hosts in there. So yeah, let's uh, jump straight into it. So if we go over, I'm actually going to load up this page from scratch so you can uh, see how to get to it. So uh, uh, we'll come over here, we'll get into Chrome and we'll get into github.com, uh, go into the mass uh, repository under case sandum, and now we want to get into packages available, and then into AWS, and then docs, and then import hosts from AWS, and you can see here, if you scroll down, uh, so importing hosts uh, and other stuff from AWS, you can see here, there's three commands that you want to run. Um, so, we can go and do that. So if we now go mass mass help equals AWS save cred and you can get some information about it. Um, oh, okay, I need to update that. Anyway, <laughs> it does work. Uh, don't, it's lying. So um, if we go mass AWS save cred um, equals and then we're going to give it a name. So here I'm just going to call it demo. And then uh, you'll see here these. That was me keyboard mashing. So let's just do the same again. Blah, 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 blah. And then blah, 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 like so. Um, do a few more just for good measure. OK, so imagine you've just put in your uh, credentials in there. So you can get these credentials from uh, from the IAM section in the AWS console. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of other places you can get them as well. But basically you need to create a user and you need to give that user sufficient access. Probably read-only is fine, but I'll do an experiment on that at some point and then create an, a, a video showing you exactly what you do need rather than sort of uh, right now for this demo I'm uh, doing uh, uh, admin access and I'm going to revoke it once I've finished the video. But you should never see the credentials anyway. Okay, so Bork. Okay, it'll give you that error. That's just simply because we haven't saved anything. If I go and um, save another one, and you'll see it won't error this time. So now let's pop into the home directory. Now, uh, eventually when I've finished refactoring it, it will be in that credentials folder just there. But for now, it's in the data folder. And if we have a look at that, uh, you will see that there's these two things that I've just created. We've got the demo and we've got the demo one. And uh, so that's all we need to look at for that right now. Um, I'm going to remove that now. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> so um, let's go and um, try using it, see what happens. So let's give us a couple of V's and we'll say import from AWS. And you'll see we've got some errors. Now the reason for that is because I haven't actually installed the AWS API. Uh, so uh, let's go and do that. So if we go up to here and we can go add forked AWS SDK. So now we just go and paste that in. And so now if we come back and try running this again, we should have some action. Oh, ah, okay, right, I need to document this. So we need to go um, PHP 5 curl sudo get install. Okay, so we've uh, we've got that installed. So now let's go and do this uh, import again and see what happens. This is looking a lot more promising now. So what it's doing is it's going through all the different regions and saying, hey, do you have any hosts uh, in these uh, in these regions? Um, it's also looking for load balances, so getting information about those. In a moment, it's going to go to Route 53 and get all the DNS information we have. Uh, for my setup at the moment, this is all pretty empty, so there's uh, not going to be a lot of interesting things to see there. It's pretty cool. 
What's that for? Okay, that's a bug. That's not going to affect what we are uh, doing right now. Okay, so if we go mass and we're going to go list equals FH because I called the account FH and you can see that uh, my server has come in and at the moment I've only got one server there so that's all we've got. Manual hosts, I've shown you that already. We're going to take that off the list. Beautiful. Okay, manipulations. Okay, so you can see I've just brightened this up very slightly so we can see it more easily. Um, location is not being set yet. Now this is something which uh, would be interesting to have set. Um, uh, at my last place we used this to sort of say, hey, these servers represent um, this particular group of customers and these servers set represent this particular group of customers, that, that type of stuff. Um, as opposed to live and staging. Um, which was represented by the host name, but I mean you could use it for that as well. Anywho, um, so let's uh, go and set this during the import. So if we come over to here, um, you can see I've created um, a little macro here which is going and um, setting up this stuff here, um, and then we've got something which is um, uh, coming for the next video. So we can just ignore these couple of lines for now, but these ones here are interesting. So we're basically saying, hey, uh, we'll default the uh, location to unknown, and then for specific servers, we'll then go and set it to something. So in this particular case, I'm setting it um, FHW, and if you have a look um, here, you can see FHW1 is the name of the host. Um, so if we go and then, uh, so you'll see that that matches the host name matches that regular expression, in which case we go and run result set, um, and result set sets a particular variable, in this case location, and it sets it to AWS. So when we go and run this, we should see uh, AWS show up in that location. So let's tr quickly try this now. So we'll wait a few moments. Okay, so if we go and list this again, bother. So we can actually test that it's going to work as, as expected here. So we can just go and apply the manipulations live and see, does it do the result we want? And yes, it does. So that suggests that the code works fine. That means that it's not being called. So I suspect I've got the wrong event in here. Okay, so you can see that's working now. Um, so the reason why it wasn't working was I was using an obsolete event uh, in my macro, so I've now corrected that to the, to the right one. Um, so we can now tidy this up a little bit. So we can say, well, hey, um, this here can now take advantage of the nesting. So we can say, well, hey, we can indent it like that. And for this type of server, we know that um, result set and we'll say server type and we'll say this one is a web server like so um, now rather than going and calling the API again I'm just going to apply this uh, whoops fine and so we're not going to see anything different here because we're simply not d displaying enough information so I'll put a nested so in here, notice that we see lots of information that's useful. Um, that will become apparent why that's useful in uh, uh, a month or two. But uh, for now, uh, you see here we've got all sorts of bits and pieces. We can see what availability zone it's in. There's all sorts of things. Now if we go and find server type, there it is. And that's set to web. So I've got a note in here about considerations. I can't remember what I was thinking when I wrote that. Uh, but let's have a look um, at this. There's lots of different things that uh, you can put in here now. Server type web and location AWS. These are actually probably two mutually, uh, well no, they're not mutually exclusive, but you would want to set them separately in practice because uh, you probably have more than just a web server which is located in AWS. So you probably want to say, well, hey, pretty much everything that um, uh, is in AWS, we go and set this location to AWS. And then there'll be other things which we'll go and set uh, the location to. So maybe, uh, I don't know, it's just, uh, just think about how you group these things together. Um, yeah.
there's lots, lots of possibilities for um, whatever works best for your situation. Now the import process makes some API calls. It's um, not a huge amount considering what it's doing, but it is, it is certainly a number of them. If you are making this update every few minutes, and there's lots of other applications calling the AWS API, you can start hitting the limit for the number of API calls you can make over a given time frame. We actually hit that problem at uh, the last place, and uh, this received the blame for it for quite a wee while, and so I ended up doing lots of optimizations and uh, showed them in, uh, that it mathematically was not this that was causing it, and eventually it turned out to be the person who was blaming me. Um, it was actually their work that was doing it, which was... So, <laughs> so anyway, um, but it is something you need to take seriously and consider if you're, uh, if you're updating this a lot. Um, if you're simply, on, at the moment I'm just using this on my personal account and I've updated it like uh, maybe three or four times in the space of 10-15 uh, minutes and then it won't be updated again for uh, uh, quite a while. So uh, I'm in no danger of hitting the API limit um, here. What happens when you hit the API limit? You will uh, get failures. Um, I think it's a fairly fast failure if I remember rightly. Mass should be pretty forgiving if you do get an API failure. Um, and if uh, if you end up in a state, you, you're not going to end up in a, you're not going to end up with corrupted data, but you may end up with missing data. Now there are ways of managing that, and that's actually a more advanced conversation to have. Um, at the last place, I basically set up a whole sort of proxy system. So we had one server, well, actually not one server. We had one group of load balanced servers which were pulling down the data um, every 10 minutes and then everything just pulled down their data from those servers so then that way um, we only had like a couple of servers which were making all the API calls and then um, uh, and the API calls are very slow and so then uh, to have these servers which have already done all the hard work sitting there and then um, they were very fast to then give those results out to any uh, computers or servers that wanted to uh, update their definitions. The macro that I made to download the definitions from those uh, particular servers I made uh, in such a way that they detected if um, data was missing and so then if, uh, if it was then they simply wouldn't use at that time and that uh, was plenty reliable for what we needed at that time. If you need to do stuff like that, that is a conversation we need to have as opposed to doing a video for it just because it's, uh, it, it's bigger than a video. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, this is probably going to leave lots of questions. <laughs> I'm slightly dreading that, but uh, leave any questions you like in the comments and um, I will uh, do my best to answer them. When I say any questions you like, I do mean on the topic of mass and importing hosts and that type of thing. Uh, See you soon.